Welcome to 5 and 5 from One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Coffee Roaster from Stronghold Games. Quick disclaimer that I did receive a review copy of this game. Coffee Roaster is a solo-only bag builder that revels in the history and love of coffee and its production. But I personally don't drink coffee and don't know much about it, so did that impede my enjoyment of the game? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start off with a mix, and for that we're looking at the coffee cards that determine what starts in your bag and what you're trying to build toward to get your victory points. On the positive side, I love the passion and research that went into these. They describe real coffee varieties, where they come from, how they're produced. I also find the variety pretty good between the major types. So light roasts do feel different than dark roasts, and beginner cards feel different than expert cards. But within those groupings, like the light expert roasts or the dark beginner roasts, they all feel basically the same. The small variations in what's in your bag or how much you have to roast to or how many victory points you get don't really give a feeling of a variety. It sort of feels samey. Number four is also a mix, and that's the cup phase that ends the game. After you've finished building and roasting the tokens in your bag, you pull one token out at a time and either put it in your cup or put it in a little holding area that has limited space. On the positive side, the tension of these pulls and the choices you make based on what you know is in your bag can be a lot of fun and also pretty suspenseful. But on the negative side, it all feels quite random, especially when you play the game more. You can build your bag perfectly, but if things just don't come out in the way you need it, then you're you're gonna get a terrible score. Number three is another mix, and that's the bag building itself and how you roast these tokens. Unlike a lot of deck and bag builders, you aren't really adding tokens to your bag generally. Instead, you're changing the tokens, so a zero bean becomes a one bean, a one bean becomes a two bean. In fact, most of what you're trying to do is take away tokens in there, flavor tokens, negative smoke tokens, those kind of things. I do like this aspect in that it gives the game a bit of a unique feel. It's almost more of a bag deconstructor instead of a bag builder. But on the negative side, kind of like the coffee cards, things feel pretty samey. Uh, going up from a zero to a one doesn't feel as exciting as you might get in a lot of these other kind of games. And also, once again, there's a huge randomness factor. If you draw a bunch of things that aren't beans several rounds in a row, you're not going to be able to roast your stuff and you're not going to get a good score. But with number two, we get to a full-on pro, and the only part of the game that really gives you some nice tactics and strategy, and that's the use of flavor tokens for immediate effects and cup effects. Basically, when you draw these flavor tokens, which come in three colors, you can take them out of your bag permanently and put them on the board to have effects that either affect your bag or effects that give you mitigation when you get into the cup phase. This already is cool because you generally want to pull out several of these flavor tokens so you're not drawing dead when you don't need them, but at the same time, their effects are often more useful if you wait later to resolve them so you have a nice tension of how long you leave them in your bag. But also to put them on the cup effect spaces you have to resolve an effect based on their color and while these color effects are often useful sometimes they're restrictive and you can't do them unless you draw certain types of tokens and that gives the game its strongest puzzle element where you figure out how can I put a red token down now to get this cup effect that I need. We're following our first pro with a full-on con at the end and kind of a culmination of the other points we've talked about, and that's the general feeling of repetition and solving the game. As I've mentioned earlier, the coffee cards don't feel that different, the token pulling feels fairly repetitive, and also while I liked the flavor tokens and the cup effects, I found that some cup effects are way better than others and I basically use them every game. All that gave me the feeling after playing this game about 10 times that I was doing the exact same thing every time, just waiting longer or shorter based on the level of roast, and I would generally get very high values, watch my playthrough even though I got lucky. So while the game has interesting stuff going on, I'm not sure about its legs. Overall, I think Coffee Roaster is a fun experience, and it does have some interesting tactics. It's also a beautiful production. I love the new art and the general quality of the components. But in a lot of ways, I compare it to Freeman Freeze's Friday, which is another fun solo game for about 10 plays. But after that, I found I had basically already solved the puzzle, and every game after that felt pretty much the same. And that might be okay for a little card game like Friday that's only $15 to $20, but Coffee Roaster, I believe, is MSRPing for $40 or more, and I don't think that that's a good price for the level of depth and replay you're going to get in this. So I fully recommend trying it out if you get the chance. I think it is a fun solo game to do, but buying it, uh, that's a little bit more iffy unless you can get it in a trade or get it on sale. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.